25 years ago, a very skimpy red swimsuit, a slow motion camera, and a Californian beach rocketed Pamela Anderson to worldwide fame. While most people couldn't keep their eyes off her on the TV show Baywatch, there was something they didn't see. Her extraordinary commitment to animal rights and social justice issues. These days, Pamela Anderson is a genuinely powerful political mover and shaker, with leaders like Russian President Vladimir Putin taking her calls. She's also become best friends with the Australian WikiLeaks founder, Julian Assange. He remains holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London, trying to evade the wrath of the US government. But from her new beachside home in the south of France, Pamela is campaigning to free him. And she needs our help. OK, we're going to walk back to the car. Keeping up with Pamela Anderson. Just tell him to walk faster. He's tall. Is no easy feat. Are you coming? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'm here. Do you want to slow down? Because it feels like I'm running a marathon. Well, no, because it's him. Are That's the dog. Me? She sets a rollicking pace. Well, it's good exercise. It's like power walking. Yes. Power walking through France. As her dog Zuzu drags us through this picturesque marina in the south of France. Oh, jeez. <laughs> He's strong. I can see where you're coming from. I know, right? Come on, Zuzu. Everyone always says, how do I stay so fit? I say, I walk my dog. It's a befitting introduction to the all-American beach babe who bounced into our lounge room in the 1990s television hit, Baywatch. Oh, baby, I'm a whole lot of woman. 20 years on, the petite blonde bombshell still causes a scene wherever she goes. Congrats, and you can't take your eye off her because she's completely unpredictable. I have to go in. Tonight, we discover the real Pamela Anderson behind the sexy playboy image and learn more about her controversial connection with the bad boy of political activism and Australian WikiLeaks founder, Julian Assange. How sweet it is. Australia should be more proud. You think the Aussies should jump in there, the government? Yes, they should, of course they should. Politics wasn't always a priority for Pamela Anderson. She started out as just a small town, innocent girl who was trying to make it as a model. That all changed when Playboy magazine came knocking. You still hold the record for the most number of Playboy covers. covers. Yeah, 14 times. <laughs> 14 times. Big accomplishment. Do you remember the first time? Yes, yes, that was so scary because I was actually a very shy, painfully shy girl. But hang on, how can you be so shy and agree to do a nude centerfold. How does that work? No, I didn't agree to do a cover which was not nude. Oh, okay. But it didn't take long for Pamela to go to the next level. When I started shooting pictures that were nude and I saw them, I thought, oh, that's not so bad. It's, it's just, you know, because society just tells you it's wrong. You're a bad girl if you, if you do this. But you've got to have a lot of confidence to do nude shots, surely. I think it's what gave me the confidence to do everything in my life. I mean, I think Playboy changed my life. It was the perfect platform for Pamela. The blonde, buxom vamp look certainly got her noticed. And at age 24, she landed the lead female role on Baywatch. I know it's windy, but can you keep your stuff together, please? Ooh, yeah. Then all it took was one very famous and sexy red bathing suit to turn her into a household name and global superstar. The Red Bay, that's the Baywatch phenomenon. Does it, <laughs> does it seem like a million years ago? No, it seems like yesterday. Ooh, I can't believe it, but I still feel like the same person. It's amazing when you look back. I mean, at one, at one point, it was the most watched show on the globe. Enormous. 150 countries. I didn't know there were 150 countries, but that's how I'm... <laughs> yes, it was very popular all over the place, but we didn't realise it. None of you saw it coming. We didn't realize until we started traveling and promoting the show and there's so much, you know, attention and paparazzi where we kept wondering, who are they taking pictures of? Soon after, Pamela met rock rebel, Motley Crue's drummer, Tommy Lee. And just days later, they got married. Pamela resplendent in a bikini.
A year later, in 1996, their now infamous sex tape, stolen from her home by a disgruntled worker, sent the then brand new internet into meltdown. You were the first celebrity to have a sex tape scandal. Well, we didn't make a sex tape. We, we were always naked and we were always filming things and this was not a tape made for anyone to see. Mm. So, and we never made any money off this tape. It clearly wasn't your fault. It wasn't fair, but... No, but it started a trend. Boys, boys, boys. It was also the beginning of one very big problem for Pamela. Men. Thank you very what is it about the men in your life? Well... What's going on there? <laughs> What's going on there? I don't know. I seem to pick the same kind of men. You married, what, four times? Four times. Engaged eight times? Eight or nine? Probably more. What? I believe in love. I don't yeah, like to be divorced. Be... I don't like to be... I mean, I love to be married. I don't like... The marriage part is difficult, but I love the weddings. Clearly. I think, yeah, maybe once should have been enough for me. Today, her latest flame is French. World Cup soccer player Adil Rami. He's 18 years younger than her, and Pamela, yet again, is in love. You're just boyfriend, girlfriend, aren't you? At the moment. That's all I want to say, yeah. <laughs> but you, have, you haven't got a ring from a deal. Of course I do. You do? Yes. <laughs> ring number 12. I'm just not wearing Come it right down. now. Right. Okay. It's upstairs. He's the reason why Pamela is now living here in the south of France and showing me the hidden delights of her favourite seaside village, Cassie. I love the... I just love the culture and I love to be able to speak another language because these little villages, they don't speak English, if you notice. Not too many people speak English. No, it's very provincial, isn't it? So when I go shopping, I have to try to speak French, and, <laughs> but they, they think it's cute. <laughs> And I think this is where I belong. I always wanted to come to France. I knew I would live in France at this point in my life. I came here 20 years ago and did the photo shoot for Playboy. And I looked around and saw the light in Central Pay and I said, I need to live here. Oh, this is très joli. I know I love this. J'aime le white. Oh, okay. For the black, I have, I have black. Do I have black? I'm just asking you. Do I have black at home? <laughs> Do I have black? As we walk through the local Cassie market, there's something almost childlike about Pamela. Take a picture. Thank you. It's as if the sexy vamp she plays is just a comfortable costume she wears to help hide the real Pamela. I think it's nice. Yes, it's beautiful, treasurely. Okay, merci. So how much, how much is that? Uh, I have it, I have it, I have it. Here, I'll buy it for you. Oh, you sure? Oh, I know you're hard up. Ah, oh, merci, yes, I know. Oh, merci. <laughs> merci beaucoup. <laughs> But whether it's an act or not, Pamela Anderson astutely uses sex to her advantage. A lot of feminists will say Playboy is the ultimate exploiter, user of women in a female form. You never found that? No, I think it's worse than Playboy. I think it was very empowering and no one forced me to do anything. I think this feminism can go too far. I'm a feminist, but I think that this third wave feminism is, is a bore. I think it paralyzes men. I think that this Me Too movement is a bit too much for me. I'm sorry, I'll probably get killed for saying that. You will. My mother taught me, don't go to a hotel with a stranger. If someone answers a door in a bathrobe and it's supposed to be a business meeting, maybe I should go with somebody else. You're talking you know? about Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. I think that some things are just common sense. Or if you go in, Get the job. <laughs> so I'm Canadian. I'm going to speak my mind, OK? I'm sorry. That's fine. I'm sorry. I'm not politically correct, maybe. Coming up, when Baywatch bounces into WikiLeaks. I think people think he's a computer screen, and I, and I humanize him. The strange love that could free Julian Assange. I feel closer to him than a lot of people have gotten to him. He trusts me. And Pammy's plea to our PM. OK, well, Scott. That's next on 60 Minutes. Avec la chance, y aura de la romance. At the back, and here we go. One, two, three. It's almost like we're on a movie set. A southern French village, boats bobbing in the marina. 
the gorgeous Pamela Anderson in a pink gingham dress, looking very Bridget Bardot. No fromage. No fromage. And speaking French. It's tempting to forget this is work. Would you like to drink something, sir? Yeah. Would you like to drink something? Oh, water is good. Water? Yeah. Water's no, is no, no, no. I'm working. This will get back to the boss. I'm working, I'll see. You'll get me in trouble. <gasps> but Pamela's art of persuasion is, well, persuasive. It looks like we're both in trouble. Something. Mm. Cheers. <laughs> you know, you could really get used to that, couldn't you? Especially this. I mean, have a look at this. I Fantastic. Cassie is wonderful. She's here in the south of France after falling in love with French soccer player Adil Rami a year ago. But she's still heavily involved in her other major passion. There's new ways to do things, there's more humane ways of doing things, and everyone just needs to get with the times and, and become more humane. Already known for her work as an animal rights activist, at 51, Pamela Anderson is broadening her politics. Just over two years ago, she shrewdly started visiting world expert computer hacker and WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange. I wanted to meet him because I wanted to ask him how to be a more effective activist. And of course, I was fascinated with him. You have no right to arrest Julian Assange. Assange is holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy in London's trendy Knightsbridge. It's effectively his prison. If he leaves, it's suspected he'll be extradited back to the US to face possible spying charges for the leaking of highly sensitive US classified information. The US intelligence agencies have concluded that he helped the Russians to leak the emails that were hacked from the Democrats during that last election campaign that saw Trump victorious. Well, I think leaked documents, the documents are the documents. They speak for themselves. It doesn't matter how they're leaked. I mean, the truth is the truth. I'd rather know the truth and that he didn't write the emails. He just exposed the emails. A computer hacker and a former sex bomb is an unlikely alliance, but it's symbiotic. The relationship keeps each other and their political views in the public eye. He's never given me a list of things to say of uh, what he wants out there. He's never tried to use you to, to paint the picture? Not to paint the picture, but I think I am valuable in some way because I think people think he's a computer screen and I, and I humanize him. I'm there for three or four hours at a time. I'm exhausted when I leave, but I've got a stack of notes. <laughs> With calculating PR precision, Pamela manages to get photographed every time she visits Julian. She's also enjoyed teasing the media with the idea of a romantic connection. What sort of relationship is it, Pamela? With Julian? Well, I mean, it's, we like to call it a romantic struggle. You know, it is to educate the world. So when you say it's a romantic relationship, are we talking holding hands while you're there or what? No, I mean, we don't have a romantic relationship like that. But I feel very close to him and I feel closer to him, I think, than a lot of people have gotten to him. He trusts me. Nothing physical? Yes, it's a friendship. What if he wasn't in the embassy? Who knows? He's a little pale for me. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's got no sunlight. He needs some sun. He needs to be on a beach somewhere. But Pamela is adamant that Julian Assange needs saving and that Australia should do more. This is a victory that cannot be denied. Do you think the Aussies should jump in there, the government? Yes, they should. of course they should. Of course they should. They have, you know, he, he's uh, Australian. Are you who looking is at... saving the world. Do you know who the Australian Prime Minister is at the moment? At the moment, I don't, because she's new. He's new. She new? He's new. He's yeah. new. Yeah. Who is it? Scott Morrison. Scott Morrison. I'll cable Scott. Cable Scott and say what? Defend your friend and get Julian his passport back and, and take him back to Australia and be proud of him and throw him a parade when he gets home. Merci beaucoup. It's just, yes. You were making this a habit. Santé. 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 Enchanté. It seems Pamela Anderson is always on the lookout for the next issue she can herald. And when we meet the local Cassie Mayor, instead of frivolous chatter over yet another glass of rosé, Pamela comes straight out with a right hook. This time, she wants to save the circus animals. Travelling circus sometimes with, with animals. Oui. It comes to Cassie, it goes to Saint-Tropez, Pita, you know, the yeah. I work, I, I work 
I work with them, and they try to close, stop the circuses. Madame Mayor, what do you think? I mean, could we stop the circus coming to Cassie? Yes. Why not? Yes! She's... Woo! That's it. <laughs> yes, we had a victory. <laughs> Pamela's fame and sex appeal has helped open doors all the way up to Russian President Vladimir Putin's in the Kremlin. I didn't want to be just a celebrity coming to meet President Putin. I wanted it to be, uh, obviously, I wanted to make my mark here as an environmentalist. I don't necessarily support Vladimir Putin, but Putin has done a lot for me, where he's stopped the importation of seal products. Putin's a real ladies' man. He would love having you around. <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, come on. Well, no, there's no romance there either. Someone has suggested that. I thought that is really crazy. Hand on heart. Putin's never tried to kiss you? No. Okay, so here's the thing. You know what Putin's like? Like he's, you know, he loves being photographed with his shirt off and he's the sort of Just macho like man, no. isn't he? <laughs> okay, no, I'm kidding. He, yeah. <laughs> I was laughing behind the camera. Three days with the exuberant Pamela Anderson is like three hours. Frankly, her frantic pace is tiring. She's certainly not what I expected. But one thing's for sure. She won't let anyone stand in her way when it comes to fighting for what she believes in. People always say, you're smarter than you look. I go, no, I'm just as smart as I look. <laughs> <Don't>... <laughs> you were stereotyped, weren't you, early on, for obvious reasons. I mean, it's that whole blonde bimbo thing. Did that, did that hurt? your potential acting career? Well, I don't know about the acting career, but it definitely got me indoors where I possibly wouldn't have been, and I, and I get to be able to talk to people that maybe not be interested so much in, in politics or, or issues. So the sex symbol thing hasn't been bad for you? Oh, I'd rather be a sex symbol than a... not a sex symbol. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, that's a compliment, isn't it? Every girl wants to be sexy. Every girl wants to be, um, you know, beautiful or pretty as they can be, but I've never thought of myself as, as beautiful. I've just always thought I was kind of cute, a little funny, and I think I've improved with age. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I hope. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.